Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. And Yahweh shall bring you into Mitzrayim, Egypt again, with ships. And the way of which I said to you, you shall see it no more again. And there you shall be sold to your enemies for slaves and female slaves, and no man shall buy you. And that is what happened to the regal class of the house of Judah. And I want to give you a brief history. I won't go into it too much, but I can't just make that statement because there'll be people that will push back. But I want to give you a brief history on slavery. You know, today, this is important for the students. Um, in my time, we were taught that the Africans were these benighted people, and they were too stupid to build a boat or to be curious about the world and cross the, the Sahara Desert. It was rubbish. Africans were just as curious as anybody else. The Sahara Desert was a highway. It wasn't a barrier. Um, so I thought, well, and there were great trade routes. So I thought maybe my Nubian descendant had come over and ended up being tricked by some white man, <laughs> and ended up in Maryland or Virginia or something. <laughs> so that was cool. And uh, if I needed an interpretation, believe me, I could have produced one. <laughs> so, and by the way, you know the Zulu thing? When we gave, when Oprah was finally in, in the first series, and we gave her a DNA test, basically the next day she went to South Africa to announce that she was opening her, what became the Oprah Winfrey Leadership Academy. She was in an auditorium like 75,000 people or something, and she announced that she just had the test and that she was Zulu. So I, it broke on CNN. I was sitting in my living room minding my own business and said, Oprah Winfrey's a Zulu. <laughs> so I called Rick Kittles, and I said, Rick, did you tell Oprah she was a Zulu? He goes, no, man, she made that up herself. <laughs> <laughs> it's a true story. It's a true story. I would lie to make you laugh, but I'm telling you a true story. So I said, Rick, are you in your lab? He said, yeah. I said, is anybody there? He said, no. I said, when the results come in, make her Zulu, man. <laughs> you know? I said, you back there making it up anyway. <laughs> Nobody believe you can take some spit and figure out a tribe? What are you, crazy? <laughs> so anyway, I was a Nubian and it was cool. I said, Rick, are you in your lab? He said, yeah. I said, is anybody there? He said, no. I said, when the results come in, make her Zulu, man. <laughs> you know? I said, you back there making it up anyway. <laughs> nobody believe you can take some spit and figure out a tribe? What are you, crazy? <laughs> I said, you back there making it up anyway. <laughs> nobody believe you can take some spit and figure out a tribe? What are you, crazy? <laughs> I was just amazed, i got to tell you. I mean, when you come to America and you talk to people about slavery, you can, you, you, talk, you can talk to black people about slavery, white people about slavery, and, and they'll, they'll give you all this history on slavery, and it only goes back to the 16th and the 17th century. And you're like, don't they teach you the history of slavery? Why? Ask the bloody question. Why are they only teaching you the history of slavery as far back as the 16th and the 17th century? Why are they only going that far back? Because they don't want you to go farther back than that. Because then you'll actually find out the truth. But from the 16th and 17th century, we'll teach you about slavery. 
you've got to go further back. And you've got to understand and, and question, why did they do this without, throughout the whole of America, in all the public schools, why do they only go back as far as the 16th and the 17th century to talk about slavery? We've got to go further back than that. Because Islam, Islam designed infernal slavery. And then the Ashkenazi Khazars, those who say they are Jews and are not, are the ones that marketed it. And the regal Negro nomads exiled from the kingdom of Judah were the main recipients of it at the hands of the indigenous black Africans. Because you've got to understand, the regal class of the house of Judah came down from Israel and they came into the land of the black Africans. And the black Africans resented the regal class of the house of Judah in their land because they had laws, they had customs, they had civility. And they were a regal class of Negro that came down into Africa. And later on, it was the Ashkenazi, the Islamic slave traders as well, that then worked together with the indigenous black Africans to enslave the regal house of Judah. This is what we've got to understand, but you've got to go back before the 16th century to understand the roots of it. So we're going to see, as we dig into this, where this slavery came from. Because it was really a system that was very, very well crafted. There was Islamic masters, and there were white Ashkenazi Khazar ship owners. There were the buyers and the sellers. And they're not going to fill you in on all of this, but really you've got a four-tier system. Number one. You have the Negro nomads that were exiled from the kingdom of Judah. Number two, you had indigenous black African hunters that resented the regal Negro nomads that had come into their territory with their own customs, with their own laws that were different and would not assimilate into their tribal culture. They were their own tribe. They were the regal house of Judah. Number three, you had Islamic trappers that worked with the indigenous black Africans to trap the regal Negro house of Judah. And then you had them sell them to the Ashkenazi ship merchants, along with many Portuguese and British Ashkenazi. 